Hi, thanks for doing that. Hi, Sharon, by the way, you're right. Hi, yes, thank you. Yeah, Not too bad. Good. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Always fun, isn't it, on a Tuesday? Tuesday evening. Oh. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. Hi there. Hi, 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 everyone. Hi. Um, it's lovely to be able to say now that I'm beginning to see familiar faces, which is really <laughs> nice. After five months of being in post, I'm recognising people and it's a delight. <laughs> Hi Rose, I'm not Tony Swindell, it's just my laptop's struggling. <laughs> you two are giving yourself an identity crisis, aren't you? It's... <laughs> <laughs> we like hands and deck, aren't we? Yes. Yeah. My, my wife's very worried. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we, 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 we need to come up with some comedy duo name for you, don't we? I'll think on that one. <laughs> hey, Ari. And I think um, Stephen um, is doing his daddy duties and taking his little girl to piano or something he was saying so and a few few last minute apologies from people as well as just um late into the evening which is completely understandable when you get to this time on a tuesday are we ready to start rose do you think or christy yeah yeah, yeah, I reckon. yeah. okay good evening everyone um welcome to the integrated sustainable trans Transport Task Force, I'll start calling it ISTT for, <laughs> for short because it's a bit of a, bit of a tongue tack twister. Um, it's really nice to see you and thank you for giving up your time um, on this Tuesday evening. Um, we, uh, we're we going to move very shortly to discuss the appointment of a, a vice chair. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, Garfield has stepped down as vice chair um, owing to his work commitment, so we'll be discussing that in item three. Um, but we, before we do, um, minutes from the previous meeting, um, has everybody had a chance to review those minutes? I think, Christy, did you send them out? Apologies, I think it might have been Jess or Sharon that sent them out and they Sharon. were a bit late, later than, than usual. Um, I can flash them up on screen quickly if that helps, um, if nobody has, if, if anybody wants to review them. Well, I think people have just indicated that they've seen them, but just okay. so you're aware, we've got um, some uh, secretariat support from Sharon. She's not been able to join us tonight, but she is helping Christy and Rose manage the, the administration. Um, so uh, is is everybody happy with the minutes as a, uh, from the previous meeting? Yeah. OK, excellent. Thank you. Um, item three, then. Um, appointment <laughs> of vice chair. Now, um, we do have one um, nomination. Uh, for vice chair, um, and uh, if, if if Nicola is here, Nicola said, is what is is nominated. Um, Nicola, are you there? I'm here. Hi. <laughs> yeah, are I'm there any other here. nominations for vice chair? Okay, I'll take that as a as a no. Um, is everybody content then to appoint Nicola as the vice chair of this? Of, okay, excellent. Yep. OK, thank you. Um, OK, so um, first of all, Nicola, thank you very much uh, for nominating or, or for being prepared to uh, do this role, because there will be occasions when um, when I'm sure that vice chair support will be required and, and your knowledge of the borough and, and the breadth of knowledge that you have um, with your your other links, I think, is really important. Um, particularly around, you know, we want to want to be as inclusive as possible uh, and particularly inclusive from a geographical perspective as well. So that's you're really, really very welcome and thank you for doing that. Well, thank you. I'm uh, really happy to, to have had a few meetings with Rose about this area and different things that we've been working on. And I think it's got so much potential um, and I've met with Stephen as well. And I just feel like the it's just at the, at the cusp of some exciting things, so really happy to help. Oh, thank you, Nicola. 
Rose, do you want? Did you want to just come in briefly? Oh no, no. I'm just. I'm, I'm. I think it's wonderful. I think it's fantastic, Nicola. I was just smiling. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you. Um, okay. So we are going to move to um, item four, which is a very going to be a brief presentation from Roy. Um, Roy Newton, is he here? I am indeed, Chair. Good evening, Roy. Good evening, everybody. Roy's going to talk to us about um, alternative funding options. I am indeed. So um, yeah, I will now try. Just slides, slides. Sorry. I was going to try and share my screen and see if I can get it working uh, okay. that way round. Yeah. Um, and, and and Roy, it's probably worth me saying, isn't it, that actually the reason that you've very kindly you're here that's and, the wrong and, and, one. and you're you're here and oh. land value capture <laughs> that could be a very. Hang, hang, hang on a minute. That's a, that's that's definitely the wrong presentation. So <laughs> it could be quite an education for us this evening. How about that one? <laughs> well, while Roy's um, looking at that, I just I, I, you'll all remember probably from one of the first or second sessions that we had. Um, it's still showing the land value capture, Roy. Right. Um, I'll I'll try resharing. And and Tony, I think it was you um, from a crag perspective. I mean, it was a sort of a general um, consensus around the room that you know we felt like we were tied to central government funding, and that you know we wanted to for our um, plow our own path. And you know what what alternative funding? So you tasked me with going away and doing a bit of uh, a piece of work on this, and and I very kindly turned to my right shoulder and turned to Roy and said, Roy, <laughs> can you do something on this? So so actually this. This is it as a as a direct request of what um, the group asked us to to go away and look at, so we could sort of look at differently about that ties to central government. Sorry, Roy, not to take up your time, but just to explain the background. Uh, to I'm it. very excited to hear it now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rose. <laughs> Thanks, Rose. Thanks. And 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 I'm here actually wearing two hats tonight. So I'm wearing my usual local enterprise partnership hat, but. For the purpose of this particular presentation, I'm, I'm actually wearing my uh, director of transport planning at AECOM hat. Because um, what I'm trying to do with this is, is give a, a very um, agnostic presentation on the different funding options and opportunities that are out there. Um, and also, if you don't like what you hear, you can blame me as AECOM and, and not me as the LEP. So, uh, I'm not going to try and do the presentation mode because it tends to freeze every time I do that. So I shall I'll just go through copies of the presentation will be available so you don't feel you have to sort of scribble it down um, manically. Um, but it's worth saying that there's been a lot of announcements and, and the information for the first couple of slides is from the Treasury website. And, and this was very much as part and parcel of the comprehensive spending review um, and the autumn statement. Um, it's also worth saying that some of the figures in here uh, have been announced several times over. So, for example, the £5 billion for buses, walking and cycling. Uh, this is probably the sixth time that this has been announced. Uh, and it's worth saying that a lot of that funding has already been allocated. I'll say more about that later. So, overall, it looks like there's a, there's a lot of money available from central government funding. But this is across the whole of the um, comprehensive spending review period, and a large proportion of it has already been allocated. So, so that's that's the caveat. Having said that, there is funding there. Um, there is funding for roads. There's funding for rail. There's funding for local road up upgrades, and there's funding for sustainable transport. But DFT funds themselves are going to be quite limited for areas outside of the cities. And I will say a bit more about that in, in, a, in a second. What is probably on the table most is the levelling up fund. Um, the first round um, effectively allocated up for schemes up to 20 million pounds for sort of regeneration and transformation schemes and up to 50 million for larger transport schemes but there was very much a focus on schemes that were ready to go and very much focus on schemes that already have their business cases um we're awaiting the guidance for the next round of leveling up but that should be imminent um, and certainly local authorities um, will be looking to bid into that but as with most things, both with DFT and uh, other government departments, these are competitive 
bidding processes, so there's no guaranteed funding that comes out of it. And if you look historically, um, the, the blue at the bottom is maintenance funding. Uh, that has tended to um, bounce around quite a bit over the last few years. Um, over the next three years, it's going to be set at a, a stable, albeit lower level. Um, the orange colour is the integrated transport block. That's the money that local authorities get to do things like walking, cycling schemes, small scale bus priority measures. And as you'll see, as a percentage of the, the actual funding available, it is quite small. Um, as is the grey, which is the bus service operator grant, which is going to be tied more to the bus service improvement plans. The yellow is traditionally what's been available for bidding into from DFT for local infrastructure enhancements. And as you'll see, for the next couple of years, it's going to be quite low in comparison to the blue which is actually the city's funding. So you'll see that the uh, a large proportion of DFT's funding is going to the cities, particularly the mayoral combined authorities. And then the green at the top is the buses and active travel dedicated funding. Again, a large chunk of which has already been allocated to the cities. Um, and of the amount that's left, um, it's been significantly oversubscribed by the bus service improvement plans that local authorities have, have put in, and therefore the amount of funding that each authority is likely to get is likely to be relatively modest. So sorry to be the bearer of, of, of bad news, but obviously this is the, th this is where it's sort of settling for the next three years. Boy, can I just come in there? Would it yeah. just be worth just saying a little bit more about um you mentioned the city's funding and um you mentioned well you mentioned devolution actually through via the diva mayors just explaining sort of cheshire west circumstances and all of that because it, i think it might help to frame things now but also in the future and the discussions that are to come yes yeah, so um as part of the leveling up white paper um what the government is looking to try and do is support areas that are interested in different levels of devolution um, it's fair to say that the cities, so particularly the likes of the uh, Merseyside and Greater Manchester, have had devolution for a little while now. Um, and there are sort of three levels of devolution. There's there's the sort of the, the voluntary operating model, which is effectively largely where Cheshire and Warrington is currently at. There's what's called a level two which creates a combined authority. And then there's the full blown level three, which has a mayor. Um, and what is traditionally happening and what the government is pushing is the, the greater the devolution, the, the bigger the slice of the cake you're going to get and the less interference you're going to get from central government. But there are limited funds. Um, so obviously those that, that, that get the deals early are the ones that are most likely to get the most favourable deals. Those that don't get the deals early uh, are, are going to be in the competitive bidding process um, that they've always been in. And, and that's really important, isn't it, Roy? Sorry to interrupt him so yeah, on Karen's point. And that's kind of the, the cusp, you know, the reason that this group was talking about it is that competitive funding. So not only are there di diminishing funds, the competition is across 79 English local transport authorities. So it's a small pot that's yeah. hotly, hotly contested, isn't it? That's right. That, that's right. And, and it's you know, going to get significantly more hotly contested. Um, over the next sort of three year period, because as you see from the graph, there's, you know, th th there are limited funds and there's lots of authorities, as you quite rightly point out, Rose, who are going to be going for those limited funds. So well, that's just, to, Roy, sorry. do you want to take questions at the end or? Um, I'm, I'm, I'm happy to take any questions uh, going along if that if that helps people. OK, we've got Andy Farrell with his hand up then. Andy? Yeah, just very, very quickly, it may be worth um, just telling us where Cheshire and Warrington are in terms of preparing for any devolution uh, approach. Because I know a few years ago um, there was a stalled attempt uh, and there's been talk since. Is, is that active again? Uh, there's work going on um, and at the moment what 
what officers are doing from the three authorities plus the LEP is um, looking at the options, looking at what some of the asks might be as part of any county deal and part of any levelling up deal. Um, and obviously discussions are happening with the, the leaders of each authority, but it's still at the early stages of, of sort of progressing to what, what a, an ask might be of central government. I think I could probably go a little bit further than that and say there is support for it in Cheshire West, but clearly that has to be agreed with the other um, areas in the sub-region and that, that's probably the point at which we're at, if that's a fair comment to, to make. OK. Sorry, Roy, back to you. No, nope, that's fine. That's, that's fine. Thank you, Chair. Um, so that sort of sets the, the context for national funds. So obviously there are other things that can be looked at um, at a local level, but it's probably worth saying that all of these things, it, it's not just about raising revenue. There, there's generally something that you are looking to achieve other than just revenue funding. There's a reason for the funds. Um, and and secondly, some of these funds uh, can be very contentious, um, particularly with local residents uh, and businesses. So I'll just very, very quickly run through them to give you a flavour of the, one, the, the sorts of ones that are out there. So there's clean air zones, very much focused on tackling air pollution. Um, as I've said there in a couple, in, a, in three examples, Portsmouth are sort of focused on buses, coaches, taxis, private hire vehicles, HGVs. That's also very much where Greater Manchester is in, in its current work, but um, it's um, it, it's had a, a significant consultation process and uh, is still rethinking um, the clean air zone at the moment. Uh, most of the areas haven't focused on uh, private vehicles, uh, except Birmingham. Birmingham's probably got one of the most comprehensive of the clean air zones. Obviously, um, politically contentious. Um, um, that's with the small p with with local population. Penalty charge enforcements. These these are um, available to local authorities. These are really more about minimising impacts um, and disruption of the highway network. So allowing sort of free flow. So things like bus lane enforcements. Um, but the government is enacting um, what's called Part Six of the Traffic Management Act. That, that allows local authorities more enforcement powers. So uh, things like um, making banned turns, stopping in yellow boxes, uh, those sorts of things, which are currently enforced by the police. It's also worth saying, though, at this point, that most of these schemes that are currently in operation, the actual expenditure of the schemes exceeds the income, but it's not about income generation. They're very much about making the highway network work better. Uh, car parking charges are probably the one that most people um, come across uh, across the country. Um, but again, they will vary according to sort of the levels of demand and the levels of infrastructure that's that's available. Um, so it tends to be that city centre locations can command a higher charge. But once you start to get out in the smaller towns and villages, then um, if, if there's any charge at all, um, they tend to be a lot lower and also that tends to be geographically across the country so Oxford for example because I used to work there uh, that can charge very very high prices in the city centre but there's very high demand in the city centre and they can get away with it. Roy well, is it worth me saying just coming in there um, so obviously we just go back to the previous slide just to yep. give the, the, the update on where, where are we here in Cheshire West clearly we haven't got any clean air zones and I think I mean, the view the view at the moment is to see what happens in areas like Greater Manchester, where um, there are what there have been trials and where there have been difficulties to overcome. Um, number two, penalty charge enforcement. Um, that's actually it is coming through the governance um, uh, in the next few months, and I think some it's gone out today in in uh, in the public domain to say that we will be transferring those powers from the police. And obviously three, controversially albeit, but it was the parking strategy was introduced in 2017, I think. Um, and obviously there's there's more um, more that can be done to build on that, but it has to be uh, in a, done in an integrated way and it has to be done in a way that 
joins up all the thinking about what you're trying to achieve, particularly if you're looking at an urban area. Rose, would you would you agree with that? You're the specialist, not me. <laughs> oh, no, no, yeah, absolutely, wholeheartedly. And it's it's all about the framing. It's it's all about how you push us out, and that's why this why Roy's sort of positioned it that clean air zone you know you, you can see the kickback from Manchester but actually it's, it's it's all about emissions it's all about health it's about lung disease it's about the, the public health campaign and and anything that we do under these um under these things workplace parking levy is another one that probably you'll come on to um you know even just the the sound and the wording there just feels quite you know um, offensive almost so it's 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 not only Karen is it about sort of finding the right um uh, the right sentiment behind it but it's making sure that, that as a public our citizens are kind of behind the the public health message or the health or you know congestion message that you're trying to get across because they're all sort of titled quite poorly but actually what they're trying to improve and do is absolutely laudable and something that we are through the whole of our counter plan trying to do um but but none of them none of them are easy to to talk about properly and um, without that nuance underneath and, and I wholeheartedly agree with that, and you, you're absolutely right, Karen. The, the, these, though they are individual um, funding opportunities, they need to be set in that broader context of what you're actually trying to achieve as wider outcomes. And, and that follows through for the next couple of slides, uh, and we'll just take them one at a, one at a time. Um, so some councils uh, have invested in uh, property, so as to get rental incomes and then use that to support services and examples of that include Portsmouth, Torbay, Essex County Council, Oxford City Council. Um, but obviously um, any investment is, is a risk, it increases public borrowing and debt, but you also risk fluctuations during periods of economic downturn. Um, so there are both up and down sides with all of these um, and as i like to say to, to to people if this was easy it would have been done already um so everything has a has a con as well as a pro um looking at work, workplace parking levy um and also alongside workplace parking levy there's uh, road user charging is another alternative um but road user charging tends to be very difficult to, to implement um, and interestingly, Roy, isn't it? It's the it's, so the ULES and the LES in uh, the the ultra low emission zone and the low emission zone in London, although they're badged as that, they are road user road user charges. So all of the democratic um, votes and all of the the policy and all of the litigation and legal framework around it, it's road user charging, but they've that's, framed that's it right. as union um, ultra low emission and low emission zone. So, but the but the policy that you would use is, is road user charging. And Roy, it might be interesting to say for the workplace parking levy that Warrington are, are currently talking to the DFT, aren't they? Warrington are talking to DFT and, and are interested and they've been talking with Nottingham City Council, um, which is why I'm, I'm saying here that there are actually a number of authorities who are currently investigating this. Um, and, and partly this is because workplace parking levy is, is easier to implement than road user charging generally, um, albeit that doesn't mean to say it's easy to implement because as you can see that Nottingham City introduced it in 2011 and they are still the only council to have implemented it. Um, so again, in their case, what they what they did is they 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 focused it on dealing with traffic congestion because that was their, their key issue and they focused it on making sure it provided the funding to invest in transport infrastructure, particularly public transport infrastructure, and particularly the, the Nottingham tram. Um, as it says at the bottom there, it's employers that pay the levy, though there's nothing to stop employers then passing this on through to employees by charging employees for using the parking spaces. So um, ultimately it can still end up at the employees. Um, community infrastructure levy, that's something Cheshire West and Chester already has in, in place. Um, and that also ties in with with usual things like planning uh, obligations and securing developer contributions. The, the key thing here, though, is it very much in, you know, in terms of setting the level of the community infrastructure level or in terms of 
negotiating the, the level of planning contribution, um, it very much depends upon the viability of the site, because if the charges are set too high, then development doesn't happen. Um, again, when I was down in Oxford, because of the demand and because of the ability for developers to make significant profits, then it was much easier to get developer contributions from them. Across a large part of the north, that's a lot more difficult. Um, burn back model is something relatively new. That's something Greater Manchester combined authority has negotiated with central government. Um, it's basically uh, linked to uh, business rates um, and it's a, it's, a, it's a formula that basically says if Greater Manchester, because of their investment in the transport infrastructure, helps to increase GVA in the area, then they will you know, basically be able to capture a proportion of that additional income stream. And that's very similar to a, a broader land value capture model. But again, land value capture um, hasn't actually been implemented as such yet in this country. It has been implemented in other countries, and particularly the US, but not in, in the UK. And the concept very much is, you know, it's, it's, it's a land value tax to, to capture the fact that those land values increase because you've increased the um, value due to the transport infrastructure. But again, it becomes quite uh, contentious and quite difficult, uh, depending upon what types of, of land you're looking to uh, to tax and, and to, you know, uh, how if they see the benefit from it, Royce. Yeah. And, yeah. and <laughs> precisely whether they see the benefit from it. So, yeah. you know, if you know, and I'll pick I'll pick something controversial because why not? If you uh, are along the route of high speed two, for example, but nowhere near a high speed two station, you you're not going to be very happy at paying land value capture tax when you're not going to gain direct benefit from that infrastructure. So that's a, a an extremely valid, valid point, Rose. Um, I'll just go to the conclusions and then we can, we can open it up to, to wider questions anyway. Um, so to summarise, effectively national funds are going to be quite limited. The biggest opportunities are probably via levelling up fund. Some opportunities potentially via a county deal but these are all very competitive. Um, local funding opportunities, yes, there's a variety of options, but there are uh, pros and cons for each option. Um, generally, you, you need to be looking to uh, tackle a particularly defined problem for, for uh, specific funding streams, but also picking up the point that, that both Karen uh, and, and Rose made earlier, they need to be supporting wider outcomes and wider aims anyway. But I think the key thing here is there's a very much a need to demonstrate that benefits outweigh the cost. And I'm not talking about benefit cost ratios and DFT type. I'm talking about the public businesses. It's being able to demonstrate that actually, you know, th there is a real big benefit at the end. Uh, and if you can't demonstrate that, then you're not going to get that public support, which leads into the final point that most of these can be very, very contentious. And with that, I'm quite happy to try and answer some questions. Thanks very much, Roy. That was um, a really good, uh, helpful introduction to all the different sort of ideas around funding. Um, can I bring Stephen Hughes in first of all? Hi, yes. Mine, mine I think maybe more a question for yourself. Council, sure. Um, <clears throat> you talked about the, the kind of council bringing in in house um, the penalty notice charges. Does the do you as a local authority have the ability to implement pollution related speed limits and therefore kind of uh, um, in the way that the Welsh government has, <clears throat> and therefore get penalty notice charges from from the breaking of of those speed limits? I'm, I'm just, I just it seems like a a nice one that as as Roy was talking about the um having synergistic benefits in terms of improving health as well as um, developing uh, um, yeah, funding. Um, is that something that you'll actually have the ability to implement or not? Um, Rose, you might need to come in on, on the yeah. uh, technical bits, but my understanding is the moving vehicle charges, it, there is an element of that within there, but I don't think we have exactly the same powers as Wales. Is, is that 
That's about correct. right. Correct at the moment, but that whole protection for future generations is a theme that's definitely coming across borders, Stephen. So we were talking to PJA Associates, um, a gentleman, mm -hmm. um, Phil Jones, actually, who who created Phil Jones Associate, who's done a lot of work on the 20 mile an hour zones and 30 mile yeah. an hour for Wales from you, you, you probably know him in the industry. And we were actually talking to him the other day and about what they led on and they led on a better quality of life. That's how Wales have, mm. have, have taken this whole movement forward. And there's a lot of interest and conversation now happening cross border. Currently, we don't. We're not in that same position. However, people like Ian Nadine and Martin Doyle in our Air quality and regulatory services. We work very, very closely with them, for example, outside of schools to get the enforcement for yeah. the parents to turn their engines off. Mm. So there's there's definitely yeah, it's a big one, isn't it? There's a definitely there's a mechanism there, there's a precedent being set. The conversation hasn't got as far as we have in Wales, but that's mm. absolutely the that synergistic to use right, much to better expression that I couldn't mm. have had. But but that's that's where local transport authorities like ours at the moment are trying to have those conversations and it's a really good pickup. OK, good, good. Sounds positive. If not, if we're not quite there yet. Is that OK, Karen? There wasn't anything you wanted to Yeah, absolutely. Thank you. I was just wondering if Steve wanted to come back, but um, no. OK, um, thank you. A Andy, Andy Farrell. Yeah, sorry, I just got off mute. Um, just kind of three or four points, really. Um, uh, it was something, um, Roy, you were looking at as part of, part of the let, because one of the problems I think our subregion, in particular this part of the subregion, was encountering was uh, business case development, i.e. you needed a proper work, a business case to be able to um, go for funding, and we just didn't have enough you know, um, business cases done and ready enough. Um, and the LEP was looking at coming up with a funding pot for business case development for particularly transportation schemes. Has that gone anywhere? So the LEP has been funding um, business cases for the last three years. Um, it is keen to carry on doing that, but as of yet, as of mid-March, we still don't know how much money we're going to get from central government uh, from April onwards. So um, okay. that's going to be the sort of the, the limiting factor. But yes, tied in with that, Andy, is also the fact that uh, certainly that's likely to be one of the asks of any county deal um, yeah. to get some, some early funding released from Treasury in order to help with that business case development. Um, and even DFT has been sort of listening favourably um, to what we're saying and, and has been helping some authorities around the, uh, the wider Northwest um, fund business cases more readily without, without them sort of insisting that it's just the local authorities that fund them in the early stages. So, so there's, there's, there's a bit of a move from central government and DFT are starting to recognise that um, you can't carry on asking for shovel ready schemes if you've not helped people develop those schemes. OK, uh, good. The other one was um, we always point to Manchester about clean air zones, and that's kind of understandable because they're close to us. Um, but perhaps we should look at what other historic cities are doing. You know, Bath's got one, I think, um, uh, which are probably more relevant to our situation than perhaps the Manchester one is. Um, the other two was, um, again, to flag up Homes England. The government's under its levelling up agenda is broadening Homes England's remit, particularly to look at um, high street reimagination and other things. So there may be something, if we can link it to that, that comes out of Homes England. Like Homes England always are, they take ages to come up with, with a new approach. Uh, but it's something to, to, to work with Homes England on. The other one, which I know um, Warrington was doing, is um, instead of um, in residential in residential schemes, new residential schemes in city in, in the town centre in Warrington, instead of developers providing car parking, residential car parking on site, they were working with them to to go either car free or a reduced car parking requirement and turning what we would have spent on car parking. Uh, provision on site into, you know, alternative forms of transport to support those developments, by cycling, walking, public transport. Um, and that was very much done on a kind of case by case basis. But you know, again, that's probably worth a conversation, at least with Warrington, on a maybe more general approach. 
would you mind if I came back in on that, Roy? Yeah. Last yeah. Specific... Is that right, Absolutely Andy? So <clears throat> I work really close with Gemma. So you know you're talking about the ring fence funding. Um, so you're talking about Homes England and the Regen work. So Gemma and I are working really closely on that because actually the levelling up is going to have a, a huge, always has a huge transport theme, but actually our yeah. DFT contact and our M M MCIH, M MCA, the leveling up. Yeah. They're MHCLs, leveling up now. Yeah. That's much easier. Yeah. I could do that one. So <laughs> our, our now leveling up and our Homes England contact, we're actually getting them all in a room to talk about Good. those three things. So it's a very much a joined up conversation internally. And that last point you made about the ring fence of funding, it was actually a point I was going to come back on, Roy, about Section 106 and 278s and, and actually, Andy, in a development in Northwich, it's in a beautifully sustainable area at the moment. This is the exact conversation we're having with them. And um, there are, you know, very few places that have got that level of urban urbanity, whatever the word would be, um, outside of Warrington within Cheshire, where you can have that healthy conversation without making developers run a mile. But actually, we're starting to have a much more measured conversation using 278 and 106. And actually, Roy, I was going to say in, a, in an additional slide deck to that, it might be something that we could add on is about, the, you know, what, what do we get from SIL? I know, sorry, SIL was on there, but 278 and 106 yeah. contributions and also maybe if something that Tony is would be wanting to talk through is actually what's that commercial income generation in terms of an alternative funding too. So, you know, electric bikes that are hired, that that re, that are revenue generating from that commercial yeah. perspective. And I think that might be an interesting additional angle onto this. But I, I was going to put my hand down, Karen, because I shouldn't really be talking. I should be listening and making notes. So. <laughs> Thanks, Rose. Great. OK. Um... Got Steve Pemberton next, and then we'll take uh, Tony. Yeah, just a quick, a quick one. I'm having terrible problems with sound, so I may have to go out and come back after I've spoken. But I'm aware that there are external bodies uh, <clears throat> that do have access to monies, and where that money overlaps with uh, our obje our objectives, we may be able to work collaboratively. And I'm specifically thinking of substrands and where their projects overlap with our projects that we can work in a collaborative way do, do we have any firm plans uh, of exploring this as a funding route is it, it worth me just saying that actually local authorities tend to do that anyway um sustrans highways england uh, network rail um any of these other organizations that invest in in networks local authorities actively talk to and, and actively look to align their investments and and, and and utilize the investments that are being put in by the others so so it's it's more a regular ongoing thing than than having anything specifically planned but in 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 case of cheshire west i'll, I'll hand over to either Karen, karen or rose christy actually i think from a oh, perspective yeah <laughs> Um, we are speaking to Sustrans at the moment in terms of um, utilising some of their funding that have been given by DFT. Um, not necessarily um, early stages, but we're, they're also speaking to the Canal and River Trust about upgrades on the Canal towpath to add, add value to our scheme as well. Um, don't particularly have any, any detail to share at this point, but obviously we can bring it back when we know a little bit more, if that's OK. Yeah, that's, that's encouraging. Thank you. Yeah, you, I was going to cover that, cover that, and there have been schemes in the past as well, haven't there? But um, I think that one thing that is really happening is that uh, other uh, organisations are coming together to get real best value out of every penny because funding is getting scarcer. So we're we, we're working much more closely now than I think we've ever done before, and that can only be a good thing. Um, right, okay, Tony, we got you next, Tony. Yeah, this is just, uh, I don't know whether this can be answered, but I, I thought that idea of using speed limit enforcement as a sort of health related and revenue generating thing was an absolutely fantastic idea. Plus, it also helps massively with, given how expensive infrastructure is to make cycle lanes and things like that, by lowering speed limits on the basis of a, of a health bit, you also make it a darn side easier for people to be tempted onto the road to actually cycle to a destination rather than and walk to a destination rather than take a car. And I'm just conscious of how horrific the costs were of that Helsby uh, cycle infrastructure piece. And I just wondered, these sort of 
speed control, average speed control sort of cameras, because everyone is just ignoring 20 mile hour limits as if they don't even exist. But these speed, average speed things that you see, like on the Sealand Road thing, are they horrendously expensive per mile to install? I'm just looking at it from a return on capital for the council, if they're able to generate revenue, is this a massive lump of money? Because at the end, it just doesn't cost much in terms of roads and knocking things about. It's putting things on lampposts and recording number plates. Is it really expensive? Do you, do you, do you want, want me to come, come in? Go on, Ray. I'll, I'll this share is the big very, you're talking. Yeah, this is, this is a very, very big subject at the moment. And actually, what Stephen was talking about when he was talking about the pollution-related um, penalty enforcement notices. So my whole... Um, um, it, my, my whole road safety budget or a lot of the road safety budget actually comes from penalty enforcement notices from speed cameras but what we're in close discussion with the PCC which is the police crime and commission police crime commissioner um who was voted in for Cheshire West and Chester is about which average road average speed checks to be put in but what we're doing is working very very close with parishes um and I know that our parish our ch our child representative is um Frank isn't it Frank but actually, and I know that um, Councillor Beecham, uh, no, not Councillor Beecham, sorry. Um, so I think the name in a second. There's some a huge interest across the part about it, but it, it's often not just funded by us. It's it's a police issue. The speeding is a police issue, but we often get involved and work with the parishes to say where we think that they should be based on what residents come back to tell us. So the mechanism's there, and it is a really interesting one to keep exploring further from a, a pollution perspective. Sorry, Karen, I lost my train of thought a bit in the middle there, but Tony, it's a big topic at the moment. Yeah, particularly from what, where you know the, the main destinations are. I look at that ring road and I look at that, you know, main Grosvenor Bridge and others. I mean, uh, you know, it's the area I would focus on, really. You think, gosh, if you could make that all an average speed limit enforced 20 mile an hour limit, I think you would dramatically increase the number of people tempted to venture out on a on a bike or walk because it just yeah. would feel so threatening. Well, Sustrans, you know, L LTN 120 compliant is, is all about that 12 year old being able to ride unaided um, and, and, and it's all about the speed limit. And on the Grosvenor Bridge, very interestingly, it was a 20, but police, the police won't enforce it. So it's going to have to go back up again to what the national level is. Okay. And, and so the, we're often caught, caught between a rock and a hard place of knowing what the right thing to do is, but having not enough powers or man or resource in other agencies that enforce it to be able to do it. And that's where the average speed check cameras come in. And then there's also so the penalty charge notices that come in that can fund other brilliant road safety schemes which all encourage people using walking and cycling and create a better environment so tony this this is a conversation that we could probably bring back to you actually um in an additional presentation if councillor shaw was of the opinion that that would be a good use of time yeah rose i was just going to share the link because um the um the press release has come out tonight but it's not on the public website yet it's uh, giving information about moving traffic but it's talking about these speed cameras cctv cameras but there is a bit of work to do yet because as i understand it it hasn't been laid in and then the transfer process to happen the power to have to transfer from the police to the local authority so i think we will see it this financial year but it will only be in part part in year so we're at the beginning of, of using this as a mechanism for for cleaner air really aren't we so there's a lot to do but it is coming but i, I, I will uh, share the link tomorrow when it's publicly available it's just not been posted yet on the website okay um tony do you want to come back on anything before i move on no okay thank you frank okay yeah one of the things you said you know about uh, about speeding is out here in the boondocks, we cannot understand how these speed limits are put together. We have a road which is about a mile and a half long. And it's classed as a 60 mile an hour. Limit and that's what it is. We recognize that, but it's only single track. How on earth do people do this? How do how on earth do they put them together? Why don't you? Well, not you, just you, but why don't the, the police commissioner, Cheshire West, 
why don't you come out and talk to us and say to the people in the parish who experience these uh, these speeds, just come and t ask us what we think they ought to be, which is a more common sense approach and saying it's got to be that because that's the national limit. So Fred, Rose, do you, want, do you want to come back? Yeah, I, I've, I I've had say, this many times and, it, and we have to follow national guidance, don't we? That's... There is. It, there's an engineering manual, unfortunately, Frank, that sets out what a... Um, I, and, and Martin, I could see you nodding, you know, on that. And, and Frank, it's a conversation that's the top of my inbox. And it's if it's on the top of mine, it'll be on the top of Karen's constantly, this feedback. What what might be interesting is, is one of our engineers coming and just doing a five minute piece on how roads are categorised. But equally, Frank, there's a lot more conversations now happening between yourselves as parish councillors, the police crime commissioner and ourselves to say, well, what do you want to do? We might not be able to change it, but we could certainly look at those average speed checks. We could look at that enforcement mechanism. And so there's a bit more autonomy being given out to parishes through your sums, um, not commuted sums, the other word. Um, and, and But the engineers, unfortunately, have, it's from a design manual um, as to why streets and roads are the limits that they are. But I know that I've got team members and the guy called Andy Rayner, who does a brilliant job of trying to explain this, but working with you to understand what we could do differently going forward. And he'd be He'd be more. He'd be thrilled to come and talk to you. Well, please do. Please get him to come and give us a, you know, give us a handshake and come and see. He's actually leading a scrutiny review on this at the moment, Rose, isn't he, Andy Rayner? So, um, please, yeah. So, you know the whole process. So I don't know whether it would be worth at that juncture inviting Frank or somebody from Chalk to to come along. But we'll bear that in mind. I'll make a note of it. Okay. Do you want to come back on anything, Frank? No? OK. Um, any other questions before we move on then? We're just about on time for a change. So, OK, I'm going to move on to item uh, five. Now, this is Rose. Rose, you're going to talk us through the work programme ideas received. Um, um, and I'm going to hand over to you for that. Thanks. Lovely. Thank you very much. OK, so um, so first of all, thank you very much. Oh, my goodness, we had an absolute deluge of brilliant ideas in terms of the suggested topics. I'm not going to um, I could I could share my screen, actually, unless Christy, you've got it to hand very quickly. I, I can put I'm it on screen. To find yeah, it. Yeah. One second. So, yeah, we had a brilliant response and we're really, really grateful. There was some fantastic stuff came in there. There was quite a lot of sort of conversation pieces which are difficult to turn into absolute topics to kind of have that spotlight on. And I think, Andy Farrell, it was it was sort of you and, and others in the last one were saying, you know, we really need this this forward plan of what we're going to be talking about. And, and we recognise that support it and want that to be the case as well. So what um, and so we've, we've, we've left names on. Only because you'll you'll sort of see a, a correlation between um you know what people's specialisms are and what their their interests are. So what we what we've tried to do is capture what everybody's sort of come back to us on. And then obviously you can see that there's quite a lot of almost sort of conversational piece in there that we're trying to work out now. How do we bring that back to you to discuss? So if you just scroll down for me um, a second. So um and then so what we what we've done is we've gone further. Sorry, Christy, if you could keep scrolling. So in terms of kind of trying to set this forward plan of activity for the group in terms of the agenda, it's we need to call, almost align those topics that you brought to us to saying how do we develop working groups um, and also maybe potentially where there's those alternative funding sources or funding available, which actually makes that path that it's not a you know managing expectations and it's actually well where can we go with this this is a, a brilliant idea there's funding identified we've got a working group together let's go and do something um and then we were also you know they so that was a, a one of the ones that we wanted to bring back and um, future funding so that's kind of where today's conversation needs to take us as well you've asked us about the core group is it fit for purpose do we have the right people on there have we got the right you know subject matters um looked at and then um there's policy suggestions so you've you've talked to us um from a policy perspective especially you know and that's a really good one steve that you've just raised about the 20 mile an hour and the air quality and and the enforcement behind that so what policy suggestions that we could talk through um and it, do you think it's about right if we get about two of those topics covered in each each of these meetings we're very aware when it gets to an evening meeting everyone's had very long days so probably two spotlight sessions feel about right but we'll we'll take um, any degree of feedback from you on that um, and so we've got um, a list of kind of from that bigger group bigger list that we had 
Um, and then thanks, Nicola. Yes. Yeah, so if there's anyone who hasn't put anything in and you want to put something in, um, please, you know, just come back to us. But it's going to be a growing list. I've, I've got about five topics I'd like to put on, but thought it was absolutely only right and proper that we <laughs> came to you as a group first. Um, and then we're, we're going to make this long list. And then um, what we're hoping to do then is we've got a bit of a grid. And what we're putting is um, where we've got correlated themes so that you can start to see. So we're starting to priority prioritise the things that you want to talk about that most people have come back to us to say that they want to put um, to this group. Um, and then if you just scroll down, I don't know if that's the end of the. I can't remember, Christy, whether there was. It, it is the end. Sorry, I took the grid off because I thought oh, it might okay. be a bit. You didn't know if you, sorry, Difficult apologies. To so, see. Yeah. So, so this is where we've got to um, on on this session on on this particular part. We still don't have that kind of absolute spotlights, but today, you know, did you find the alternative funding? Um, you know, was that interesting? Is that the kind of topic that you want to have covered as a, you know, maybe an academic piece or set in the scene? And then later on today or well, this evening, we're going to hear from Vanessa um, and colleagues about Active Travel Fest, which is, you know, this brilliant Active Travel Festival that we want to launch um, and, and host in, in Cheshire. So, you know, they're, they're just two examples, but then we've got the late master plan that's just come out, the strengthening of LC Whip. Park and Rise, an enormous one that I know a lot of you want to talk back to us about um, the the BSIP fund, the bus service improvement plan. The we've got we've got very little sort of um, open data at the moment. Is that a topic that we can talk about? Mike Garrett and I have been talking in the background about freight, um, last mile national freight strategy. What are Cheshire West and Chester doing about it? I mean, there's literally we could have a you know, but I don't want them to just be about conversations. I want these to be things that you've put forward that by discussing we can actually bring into reality if that's possible framed framed within the normal with the normal sort of caveats to it um so this is what this is what Chrissy myself and Sharon have got at the moment that we're working through and then what with what we're planning on doing is basically reissuing the agendas with two spotlight sessions on each that follow the 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 line of what you want us to cover but I mean it, I just does that sound it, it's kind of been a little bit difficult to turn your thoughts into absolute reality in terms of sessions but would be very welcome to kind of take your thoughts on on how you think we should transform this into a forward plan of work so i know that there's hands just gone up there so is that okay thanks rose um frank is that a legacy hand you've got up there you've got your hand up yeah okay uh stephen perry yes sorry Chris, would it could you could you put back the uh the presentation the last page because I think it's all great stuff, Rose. What I just would like to uh, more clearly understand is the link between not just the topic for discussion, but but the words that appeared above that in terms of um, work streams or yeah. Um, I mean the. Um, I suppose what I'm asking is that we there's lots of interesting things we can learn from this meeting, and I thought the funding thing was excellent. Thank you for doing it. Um, but I have I have a question about action. Uh, you know, and progression. So if if the primary purpose of this group is to learn and absorb and, you know, and, and therefore uh, sort of uh, inform others as well, that's great. But if we're also trying to do something, um, I think, you know, I had a chat about, you know, the what and how. I feel that the right thing to do is for local authorities to say, this is what we want to achieve. Now, how can we achieve it together? So I'm not sure I'm waffling too much, but can you can you help us at least in your own thoughts? Yeah. And I don't mean tomorrow. I don't mean this in the next meeting, but you know, a year from now, what would this group be doing um, in terms of making things happen? I suppose rather than just learning. Yeah, uh, yeah, Stephen, that's been, and that's the kind of the creative tension in the group, isn't it? Is that we want we don't want to just sit here and tell you lots of really interesting things because. You could Google quite a lot of it, I'm sure, you know, it's just us, us talking to you. And so it has got to be about delivery and this and, and what we want to bring you into the conversation on. And but I think with what with what was suggested, I think it's just been a little bit difficult to kind of really say, OK, right, brilliant. Um, things like LC whip strengthening, they're 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 in the minority rather than the majority aren't they but that's something Stephen that we would love to get a working group around and yeah. get that get the LC whip strength and paper on the on the table and say right what do you think Leach master plan 
it's out there now. We'd love to get a group of you together and say, OK, is, is there anything that we could translate to other places? There's an active travel announcement that Christy will talk to you about later that I think would be brilliantly beneficial to get people's thoughts on to say, you know, is it the right scheme? What kind of things could we be suggesting on it? What does the detailed design look like to you? And then there's a whole host of other things like that. But what yeah. we're trying to do is, first of all, just listen to what you thought was important and, and what you'd like in a forward plan. But actually, maybe it's it's a mix of that plus um, these very, very real and practical and specific schemes could be added in to talk about or we take that off into a working group. I think yeah. it's just the size of the group. It's a little bit. Uh, how do we how do we best use people's time but remain yeah. focused? I, I, I really do fully appreciate that. And I think that, you know, I think we're all aware of the pressure that you and others are under anyway. But I suppose, again, using my analogy, I think the process of education is excellent. But I think it would be great if in the next two or three months or the, you know, the next two or three quarters, I should say, really, the, you know, we, we tried at least two or three things, you know, the LC re re rewrite or something else. Because I think you learn by experience and you learn what works and what doesn't work. And the current structure is a bit unwieldy. Um, there's a hope that it will become less so when we focus on certain things. So, again, I'm not looking for a magic solution. I'm just looking for the experience to try to learn from. That's all. And yeah. I'd encourage it. There's some really juicy stuff coming up, Stephen. There There's is, some yeah. really brilliant things coming onto our radar now that we, when Karen and I, Christy and I were talking, we're like, oh yeah, <laughs> let's let's set the <laughs> Integrated Sustainable Transport Task Force on this one. You know, let's get all these heads together. There's some there's some properly tangible things coming onto our radar. Yeah, which is great, of course, which is fantastic. Yeah. I mean, Thank park you. and ride is the thing that is jumping out but um also the rural mobility fund um the transport in and it's actually sort of in the frodsham hellsby out towards weaver and cuddington way um is going imminently due to go live and i mean i don't know if there's a role there rose um we sort of finished most of that work now but there's do you think there's an advocacy role as well karen and yeah because I've been doing a lot of work and I was, uh, you know, about the f of fuel poverty and the fact that we're in this absolute sort of crisis at the moment of of costing, you know, what it's costing people to fill up at the pumps. And I've been reading a million and one articles and commentaries about, you know, leaving your car and taking it back to travel and public transport. How do we promote that? How do we support people? How do we support people in this time of crisis when they can't afford to, you know, use their car at the moment there's a I think there's a really big advocacy role for this group as well to support us help people think differently about you know and, and the, the situation that they found themselves in um, and and tackling these like you say you know these bigger social issues yeah um it's, it's basically demand management trans it's sort of on demand transport isn't it that you can order and is a trial but it's quite exciting um that particular issue and park and ride is going to be a big one as you said lc whip um is going to be big and, and actually understanding the outcomes of some of these leveling up bids too bsip mini holland uh, uh to some extent in in the in the east of the borough as well further down the line winnington the winnington corridor so i think there's a lot of really good opportunities coming forward they're just they're just sort of um we're not 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 quite there yet because we haven't quite got all the ducks in a row and haven't got quite got the answers on funding but i hope we will do in the next couple of months um S steve do you want to come in there steve pemberton uh yeah really just to say my uh, my more erudite friend stephen perry has really uh covered what i was going to say um in as much as we see this as a a, a you know a higher level meeting where things can feed back up, but there's got to be things to feed back up, uh, which really means to me we need the mechanisms in place to take LC WIP as a, a really good example. You know, what are we going to do? How are we going to work as a collaborative group to bring something back to this table um, to talk about LC WIP? Because without those underpinning activities, this will just become a, a talking shop that goes round and round and round without any outcomes. Uh, and I, for one, and a pretty sure everyone in, in the group does not want that as the outcome. So it's a question of how you, how are we going to get from where we are now to a series of, of activities that do 
generate outcomes that can be fed back up here. So it's the it's the underpinning things that I'm looking for. OK, I think we share that too. Um, and I think we will work hard over the next few months to try and develop that. Um, I do have to say in defence of the officers, though, that there is there are still capacity issues. We're still recruiting people into new people. into <coughs> roles, I, aren't we? I think we all recognise that. Okay. Um, can I bring Tony in at that stage, please, Tony? Yeah, it was just a, a quick one building on what, what the two Steves, uh, I think, were pointing at. But I, I have same, the same issue, which is I, I really want to feel like I've made something happen here as opposed to it just being a talking shop. And in the back of my mind all the time is looking at that list and thinking, well, that's just like a budget meeting I used to have where you'd say, well, fine, it's a lovely list. But, we, you know, there's no point shopping for a £20,000 car if you've only got five grand in your pocket. It's just a waste of your time wandering around showrooms looking for things that you can't afford. So for me, it was almost like a crystallisation of these things we could definitely do because we've got the resources right now in human and monetary form that we can get on with those as a priority this is a group of things that, frankly, we might be able to kick off, but we won't kick them off until we get the funding nailed, and then we will kick them off. And these are things that, frankly, are in la-la land, and they're not even worth wasting our time on because they're just going to chew up a load of time and resource and create frustration and, and not get us anywhere. And that, that's the bit that I'd love to get my teeth into, really, which is getting stuck into where... I know if I work jolly hard, I could move move the move the thing forwards because all the other bits that are that are holding it back are all in place. It just requires energy and commitment to push it over the line. Um, and that's what I'd love to see in that list, which is, you know, what could we what could we do now? And I'd have that as the priority first, and then the next lot priority two. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that list was only okay. things that you'd contributed yeah. to us. It wasn't sure. things that we'd put on there for our own sort of yeah. enjoyment. So, you know, if if there are, I totally, completely agree, Tony. Like that's maybe a filter want. needs to be applied to them that's quite harsh in a way that says, do you know what? This is a great laundry list of <laughs> great ideas. But actually, when you put it through the filter, these are the three we're going to work on. Yeah. I hope I'm not being too obstreperous here. No, not at all. Not at all. I'm sorry, my connection um, was playing up for a minute then. I didn't catch all of it, but. Um, no, I, I can respond. Karen, he was not, you're not being obstreperous at all, Tony. It's exactly the energy that we want and, and that direction. And that's what we've been looking for. And that was the kind of idea for the list. And it's what we really, really want to get from this group. So shared objectives. Sorry, Karen. So I was I was just going to say that um, I mean there are some things Christy's going to cover in the in the in the next item that actually are live and happening now that I think that that, that this forum uh, could add add some value to and work on. Um, Tony, I, I hear what you're saying about uh, waiting on funding bids because you can imagine our our day to day uh, frustration because we feel exactly the same. We can't move forward until we know we've secured the funding, and it's sort of. You know, uh, there will be things that we will secure the funding for and things that we won't. So and that's the reason for waiting so that we don't waste people's time working on things that are in la la land, you know. Um, and I say that absolutely candidly. But I think there are some things that Christy's going to talk about, uh, which which perhaps we could set up some some work on. Rose, do you think? Yeah. OK. Um, Andy Farrell. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I could be in danger of saying exactly the opposite. Um, there's always a danger in groups like this that um, we focus on initiatives. Um, and in a world where we know uh, funding over the next few years is going to be a bit limited, uh, initiatives that, you know, to sometimes we haven't got a, a, a funding or difficulty with it. What, what I'd be interested in um, this group doing a little more on is policy development. And I know um, Rose and I have, have chatted about this in the past. You know, the world the world is changing fast. And, you know, quite often the world of local authority for, for 
good reason, you know, struggle with legacy policies and policies that don't aren't keeping up with what the world's really about. Um, uh, and to be focusing on kind of, at least initially, what we want the place to be rather than the initiatives we feel are good to deliver. Um, puts those kind of initiatives in context and gives them some sort of prioritization. Um, uh, and it almost goes back to the funding issue that if you get its policy development right, quite often you get other people to deliver stuff um, and you turn into a, an enabling authority rather than an authority chasing money uh, constantly. Um, so I'm wondering whether there be um, a significant role in this group in terms of uh, supporting yourselves um, and particularly Rose's team in terms of uh, policy development and policy change. Rose, do you want to? Yeah, no, no, Andy, it's all um, listening and it, yeah, it it's all there to do and it's it's all needed and yeah, it's a. Uh, it's a tough place to be at the moment in in terms of sort of getting that balance yeah. right yeah. actually because you you probably guessed my aspirations you know up here and i joined with this force of kind of wanting to create this physical and real change and then and then it's sort of a block and then a block and then a block but but absolutely it's it's finding the bandwidth it's finding the headspace to be able to really articulate how we as a group work perfectly on elements without people feeling disengaged or that they're not you know involved in the right things and that people who do want to have a an opportunity to input can input while also finding that almost headspace and bandwidth myself to to work out what those things are Andy so yeah I don't I don't disagree with anything and I think that policy development the advocacy the scheme the initiative the learning you know the development and it's really improving the quality of life for everyone who lives and works and plays in Cheshire Western Chester that's what can come out of that group at this group as a result of doing all of that yeah, yeah. okay th thanks Andy um can I bring in Nicola now please Nicola yeah, just really interesting thinking and listening to everyone. I think it's actually a bit of both <laughs> of what Tony and Andy said, in that I think it's quick. It's essentially it's the what's what are the quicker wins and the sort of more strategic impacts that we want to see. And I think it is for me, it's a bit of, about how we how the identity of of Chester and Cheshire West are, are shaped and what role can we have in that shaping of that. So our places are you know, you know, more sustainable and more, you know, wonderful places to live and visit in the future, you know, so it, we want to see things now for our kind of generation, but it's, it. I think, you know, the role that we have in inputting and shaping for the future is really important. Um, but on the sort of kind of quicker wins side of things, I think a lot of that comes to, you know, looking at the current people who are living here and visiting and so on, and how can we help affect sort of behaviour and habits change. So, you know, there is um, quite a lot of infrastructure that people couldn't already use and we want people to use it more. So, you know, Vanessa's idea around and Stephen's idea around the AT Fest or is something that is can be part of that kind of cultivating new habits and behaviour change. And um, there's also other partners who are not currently engaged in this group who have different goals. So I was, I've had an email, for example, from Active Cheshire, who've who've developed uh, working on an app to encourage more young people to move. It sort of tracks your movement and they want to all they need to do is populate it with locations and routes and, and, and so on. So we can help others achieve their goals, which is young people moving. But that then creates like new habits and behaviours for the future, which then kind of will hopefully lead to greater you know, infrastructure investment as people become more regular users. So um, I think basically this group can base can look at both those sides of things, and we might we might want to just sort of categorise the the activities in in that way. It might be helpful. Thanks, Nicola. I think that's really really helpful point to make. Um, and I'm just, just on the last point, sorry, if you know, if we need, if there's people that we can come bring into the meeting to present on their initiatives and just, and then we can sort of 
share our insights and thoughts and how we can help them develop them even better. That's I think that's a that's a good win for this group. OK, I think we're going to do that in the next item, but that um, I'm just going to bring in Mike Garrett and then Roy and then those will be the last two speakers. Mike. Yeah, hi there. Thanks. I'll be very brief. I was really just going to back up what Andy Farrell said. Um, uh, because I think there are kind of policy issues which also need to be addressed and just share with with everyone um, a recent experience. We're doing some work with the DFT at the moment on an aspect of freight. And and to be honest, the freight, the DFT is so behind the curve as to what the private sector is doing in a green sense, that it's sort of untrue. So I think it's really important that we don't get locked into what, as it were, the DFT thing and 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 chasing just chasing on those bases and looking at where funding appears to exist at the moment. So yeah, yes to thinking out the box a bit and um, and and trying to develop policies, albeit I understand the funding issue. But I think we we need to think about what can be self-funded, because otherwise we just get stuck in a in a box. Okay, thanks thanks for that, Mike. Um, and the and the freight work I think is something that Rose is really keen on developing uh, for the borough particularly. Um, can I bring Roy in, and then we're we're going to move on to hear from Vanessa after that on active travel first. Roy. Thank you. Thanks, Karen. Uh, I'll keep this fairly brief. Uh, it's basically to agree um, with Nicola. Um, I, I think it's both. I think I think both Andy and Tony are right. I think you've got to get the policy context right. And the transport policy, actually, it's really what can transport do to achieve your wider policy aims? How do you need to set your transport systems up to, to deliver that? So it's how do you deliver your low carbon agenda? How do you deliver inclusivity? How do you deliver sustainable economic growth? And there's definitely a room. There's definitely room to consider how things are changing because there's a lot changed simply due to COVID, but there's more changes coming coming along, home shopping, home working, et cetera, et cetera. So, so I, I agree. Andy, that, that there's a there's a policy context here to get right for transport to support others. But I also think Tony's right. I think and, and we've been doing as ACOM some some work for other local authorities which are doing exactly what you're saying, Tony, which is working with them to identify what's deliverable within the next five years. But crucially, what do you need to be working on in the next five years to start to develop for when funding may become available? Um, so funding should never drive this. The transport should always be about what you need to do locally, but the, the funding context should be taken into account in terms of how quickly you can deliver stuff and how you might be able to, to play into certain funding streams as they become available. Greater Manchester is a good example where actually they've had a very consistent strategy for about 20 years, despite different governments, despite different pots of funding, despite changes in what those pots may be called and what they've done is they've tailored their bids for whatever that funding source is but still to deliver what it is that they wanted to deliver so i think i think there's all to play for which then allows me just to just 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 to finish don't lose ambition rose don't don't become disheartened even after 30 years i'm still glass half full in this industry um you know we can achieve stuff Oh yeah. Oh God, no. The ambition will never go, Roy. It's just, it's just the wayfinding that I need to do. <laughs> thanks. Oh, well, thank, thanks, Roy. Th thanks very much indeed. And, and yeah, I can, I second that, Rose. Um, you know, um, we're really, val we really value your input. So I hope you don't feel too disheartened. No, no, not at all. I just wish I could do all of this brilliantly straight away, but it's just taken a little bit of navigating. Um, but we'll get there, and I'm, I'm really excited that we will get there together with this group. Okay. Well, thank you very much for all your input. Um, we have now um, an idea and a presentation from uh, uh, Stephen Perry and Vanessa Bond on an active travel fest. So I'm going to hand over to them. Is there a presentation to share? Oh, you 
Yes. Yeah, there should be. Uh, sorry, this is Stephen speaking. I think that uh, Vanessa's going to do the speaking, but I'm not sure. What, is she there at the moment, Vanessa? Yeah, I think it's oh. still on mute. Yeah, there we are. Yeah, um, it went over to Sharon yesterday. Yeah. So do you want us to share that on screen then, Vanessa? Because it was... Um, looking at Christy. Yeah, we did. We received it. We sent it round to the core group, but it was a was it a document or a presentation? Uh, it was a PDF document. So, yeah, okay. Sharon so, said that she was going to send it to Christy. I've got it. I don't know if I um, hang on. Bear with me. I there, there was two attachments. Sorry, which one is it? Is the um, it's this, a, this one. Bear with me one second. This one. Uh, have I shared it? Yeah. It's what? That one. Yeah. Just okay. tell me to when to move on. Then I guess I'll just mute myself now. Sorry. Okay, great. So yeah, just take it to the uh, next slide, please. That's it. So this initiative, it's come about um, through sort of informal chats that happen between um, between uh, Crag and the Chester Cycling Campaign. Um, and we thought, what could we achieve um, just by sort of being a bit creative? Um, so we got together uh, just informally to begin with um, and thinking around sort of uh, uh, not reinventing the wheel, but basically thinking what would work in Chester. So the IKEA advert, the wonderful every day, rather than sort of making it over complicated, um, we thought we'd sort of go down that route. Another major brand that's got a similar culture is Nike. So just just do it. So it's very much sort of, you know, um, that kind of vibe. So Active Travel Festival. So it would be a pilot, Chester, uh, show, showcasing, um, you know, sort of uh, the, the city um, and utilising sort of existing infrastructure um, such as park and ride and travel lanes. So the case for it, well, obviously there's been the, the, the climate emergency declared for a, a number of years now, pre-pandemic. Uh, the action plan um, would, uh, at first would, would, would directly um, feed into that, it would support it directly. And then obviously over sort of lockdown, you know, everybody was out on the street, everybody was walking, everybody was cycling, it was fantastic. Um, and the stats do show that a lot more people were cycling, but actually in terms of car ownership, I think um, in Quack, it's sort of higher than the average. So we're working to improve that massively. Next slide, please. That one. That's it. So Chris Borden cycled across the Pennines to York. He's left Greater Manchester. Uh, now the, uh, uh, the, the, the the chief at active, uh, active Travel England. Um, so again, sort of looking at furthering the policy paper gear change, um, you know, sort of in, in that vision. Um, and obviously sort of looking at, you know, Rose's appointment and her ambition, enthusiasm, dynamism. You know, collectively, I'm sure that we can all achieve this. Um, so it's about not just sort of getting us all excited about doing these everyday things, cycling, walking, scooting, but hopefully we'll encourage people to take them up as those wonderful everyday activities rather than something. One of the other ideas that we sort of uh, toyed with was a sort of a car free Sunday, um, which is popular sort of throughout the world. Um, but also in London, not that we toyed with this, but we discussed it. Um, some of you will be aware of the naked cycle ride that happens in August. So rather than making it sort of a novelty one off event, just incorporating it and sort of thinking, well, why challenging? Why, why aren't we doing more of this on an everyday basis? Plus the fact, obviously, sort of in the wider sense, looking at how, um, you know, sort of the impact on you know, the, those socioeconomic benefits, reduced air pollution, et cetera, public health, et cetera. So next page, please. Yeah. And then also, as Nicola was talking about earlier, getting children, you know, sort of to get into that physical habit sooner. 
Um, but also as well from the politicians' point of view, actually sort of, you know, ticking those boxes as well, which is important. So the actual concept, we're, we're making it non-competitive. It's just, you know, sort of anything else isn't going to work. Um, and sort of looking at what we wanted to do. So, you know, obviously walking, cycling, scooting, um, environmental um, concerns, promotion of those. Um, and also the walking and cycling offering, so far as tourism is concerned, both locally uh, and wider across the UK. Next page, please. And then, yeah, sort of the, the target groups, um, obviously trying to make it as wide and inclusive as possible. Um, so obviously sort of, you know, children, but also students in terms of sort of widening their participation um, in active travel um, and other underrepresented groups. Uh, CHOREC is um, Cheshire, Holton and Warrington Racial Equality Centre, which is on Cupping, Cupping Street. Next page, please. So again, sort of working with some national partners, um, locally with schools and children's clubs, with the local authority, including sort of, um, you know, sort of Ian Ashworth in public health. Um, and then amongst this group, sort of, um, you know, had a, had a conversation um, today with Jane Dodson, who's head of comms at the University of Chester, um, apparently, the vice chancellor has a trike, um, and uh, yeah, so she's interested in potentially supporting the event, which is great. Um, and I think Tamara Hunt, who um, is the sustainability manager, might be on this call, so um, you know she might know a bit more about that. Uh, obviously, um, destination Chester Marketing Cheshire is the marketing destination organisations are key. Um, and uh, yeah, Nicola, hoping to um, speak to her about, about this shortly. As far as bid are concerned, originally they were um, sort of a little reluctant to get involved because I think going down the, the car free Sunday route wasn't going to work because we we're all fed up after clockwise of road closures um, and you know, sort of just getting over the bus lanes um, issue. But I'm pleased to say that um, they are now not just supporting, but also our first sponsor. Next slide, please. So this is just one that we can we can sort of uh, whiz through through sort of quickly. Uh, but at the bottom, in terms of sort of meeting some of the goals of national strategy, perhaps even looking at the sort of the holistic United Nations sustainable development goals as well. Moving on. Um, so, yeah, we, we need to sort of really uh, look at what the funding model is here. So I think the idea is that we go out to sponsorship um, and then we can sort of put in place the structure that we need um, and then, um, you know, sort of deliver, in which case we would be looking for support from sort of um, partners in the room uh, today. So the, the coalition of the willing and all that. Obviously, sort of talking through what any practical considerations um, might be. Um, and yeah, so the, the, the I, next slide, please, Christy, sorry. Um, and then sort of looking at sort of timing. Um, the reason why we chose this date uh, was because uh, it's sort of when the children have gone back to school, parents are looking for stuff to do at the weekend um, and the weather's still good. And it's complementary to some of the events that are already happening on that date. Um, and the day before, there is a sort of um, a, a, another green event that's happening in the Grover Park that Stephen Perry might know more about. Um, but uh, the race course, it's the grand finale the day before. So Chester should be quite busy naturally anyway. So where's it going to happen? So the destination is the city centre itself. Obviously, for people who live locally, they can just sort of walk, you know, uh, cycle or bill from home. Um, but then we see park and ride as being really crucial as being the original mobility hub. Um, and, you know, sort of looking at a few ideas there, sort of Urban Tricycle, who are the UK's leading providers of tricycles, are based here in Chester and in London. 
Um, so we've spoken with them and, and you know, they have all sorts of sort of pop up wheelable coffee, crepe, pop, popcorn. Um, so they they would be at the, the actual venues while people were waiting for the park and ride buses. You could get some cycle repair done from Dr. Bike. So there's different sort of you know, themes, park and ride, park and pedal. Um, obviously using the Chester cycling campaign downloadable maps, park and scoot, um, and park and stride. So for the Upton park and ride, then it would work really well to be able to walk in along um, to, I still call it Super Trees, but it's City Forest Garden giving it its proper title, and then to be able to get the park and ride bus back. Um, and again, sort of trying to encourage local employers to buy into it and we could maybe you they could use their own car parks as starting off points um so ranging from you know mbna through to chester fc or the countess of chester um and other some other community locations um next slide please yeah so these are the flavor of the kind of, of events that we would propose and it is sort of utilizing you know maximizing on those public spaces, um, amphitheater, park, race course, meadows. Um, so various uh, various options, um, you know, something for everybody. New highway codes got everyone scratching their head. But let's so let's do some um, workshops, activities for children, um, accessibility, that's a big thing. Um, and also sort of, you know, celebrating the success that you know, Chester was the first British city to have the European Commission's Access Award and actually giving, um, you know, disabled um, participants the option to see that there is actually uh, an alternative to using a blue badge in the car. Um, again, working with sort of brand projects, um, educational workshops, doing something there in sort of the public space, skills training. Yeah, so BMX using, again, existing facilities um, and then the experience zone. Maybe by then Ginger will have accelerated from having e-scooters to e-bikes, who knows, that would be great. Um, and then Next page, please. So these are all just themes. So talking about sort of active travel on, on prescription, um, if there are any opportunities there. Um, again, working with sort of um, marketing destination partners um, and others. Um, so yeah, I'm just sort of touched there on the sort of the car free day option, which we've discounted. So if we can move on. So I think we'd probably be looking to, um, when we have su sufficient sponsorship, to be able to um, appoint a uh, an event management company to do to do this, because obviously it's you know it's quite a big it's quite a big gig. It's not just sort of setting up a Facebook page. It's uh, it's actually having a proper uh, approach to it. So the usual suspects, companies like Airbus or Iceland that are based locally don't necessarily they're not naturally green companies one building um, wings for planes or planes um, and Iceland foods being a uh, a retail a food retailer that has fridges on you know sort of 24 7 or freezers so you know sort of hopefully some sort of quick easy wins there um, and then looking at can you scroll down uh, looking at some um, sports brands that do cycle wear and other active travel wear. Messaging and communications, obviously that needs to be adapted to those different audiences. Um, press social media are actually absolutely key, um, particularly if we're to attract a sort of a more diverse, younger demographic. Uh, next page, please. And then in terms of um, ambassadors, I mean, you know, we've uh, spoken already about Chris Boardman, 
uh, Jason and Dame um, Laura Kenny. Jason has recently retired and is based locally, as is Dame Sarah Story, who's going to be stepping down um, in May, I think, as Sheffield's um, uh, active travel guru. Um, so waiting to hear whether or not they have availability. But also I found out today that Sir Dave Brailsford is an alumni of the University of Chester. Um, and I, you know, always thought it's an absolute gem of an interview when he was asked by a French journalist why Manchester cyclists, the Sky team, competed so successfully. And he said it's because our wheels are really, really round. <laughs> which I thought was absolutely hysterical and the French sense of humour just that they sort of just nodded and I think ironically they actually made the wheels um, also interesting fact from the University of Chester is that Mark Cavendish is an honorary graduate so there's lots of sort of natural synergy there which we hope to take advantage of um, again the event itself looking through um, a, a number of options and again this is like a, a menu that we can sort of you know uh, see who has availability what is doable because the idea is with all of this as with the general theme of the event that things are easy to organize and low or no cost um, so yeah so Northgate Exchange Square we could maybe have a DJ tripe something going on there um, likewise, across the other uh, open venues in the city, uh, Pedal and Park, pick up a picnic, hit the park, Peloton, possibly not them, but another um, another um, stationary bike uh, provider, possibly, because the weather might not be great. It's not guaranteed. So maybe we could do an indoor cycling session at either the race course or the Grosvenor Park Pavilion. Um, again, those pop ups. Um, with various retailers um, and hospitality providers um, and you know this could could be um, a launch event as such so Dame Sarah Story at Story House um, so in the Garrett Theatre um, or you know if, if demand um, you know if, if, if the demand was high enough in, in, in the main theatre because don't forget this would be a Sunday um, and then looking at a day of um, cycling film. So ranging from the sort of the, the classic, the black and white 1948 classic Bicycle Thieves, um, Two Seconds, which is uh, a Montreal film um, with a, a hit ticking the LGBTQI plus box. Um, likewise with Rising from the Ashes, um, which is a 2012 story of the Rwandan cycling team um, fighting to build hope for the uh, Tour de France contention am amidst the horrors of genocide. So particularly poignant at the moment with what's going on, say, in Ukraine. So lots of lots of options. There. And obviously the classic, the programme about Lance Armstrong. So University of Chester, the On Your Bike Challenge, not sure what that is at the moment, but Jane is open to the idea. Um, and then Watergate Street Gallery, one of the city's award-winning retailers. Um, and yeah, sort of having that sort of um, alfresco bike painting experience, if that's what you, you know, if that's what you like to do. Um, next page. That's really just to give a sort of flavor of what's going on. And then finally, yeah. So at the end of it, um, you know, actually doing that evaluation to make sure that we're hitting, um, you know, sort of, uh, you know, everything that we want to, how it's worked, how it's not worked, so that hopefully this would become a regular event. Um, you know, it's a pilot, so let let let's see where it goes, um, and then hopefully it would become a part of the Chester calendar, whether it be annually or quarterly. Um, so yes, so we just want to scroll down, Christy, and then if anyone has any questions or if Steve Perry wants to come in with um, anything that I haven't covered. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. <laughs> Thank you so much, Vanessa. Um, Steve, do you want to come in before I just briefly comment? Yeah. 
yeah, I think uh, what what uh, Vanessa's paint is a, a very <laughs> exciting, challenging um, menu of all things we could do. And obviously we can't end up doing all of them, but I think it was very helpful to have the discussions that we had. And this thing grew out of conversations between us as just a cycling campaign and Tony, who you've already seen Tony, <coughs> Tony's enthusiasm, Tony Barcroft, and it's evolved. Uh, and what uh, what Vanessa actually, no, no, Chris has failed to mention is we've actually had quite a lot of intercourse, uh, interface with um, uh, the Chester Sustainability Forum as well, Stephen Hughes. So uh, a group came together and I think we've been quite creative. You, you saw one document, the one that uh, Vanessa's been through, the other document which I produced, which is trying to put some hands and legs on some of the concepts and ideas. They are very draft, they're very ambitious, um, but in a sense, this will only happen if we get uh, lots of people working together. And I have a picture of, a, of a, you know, a jigsaw and everybody's got to make their bit of the jigsaw and bring it to the event and then it'll all fit together and work. So I think that uh, we could have, have a long time discussing the detail, but I think it's been presented as, you know, an inspirational suggestion that you can comment on and hopefully in the right way support uh, as it develops. The, the date chosen is really the only date that really worked this year. But without being negative, I think what we have to say is that, uh, you know, we, we, we have to see what's involved and then confirm it's achievable by the date, because even six months is fairly challenging. But uh, yeah, open open to comments and uh, thoughts from other people. Thank you. Thanks both. And if I can just um, just briefly comment, um, it's exactly the kind of blue, blue sky thinking that I think um, we can, you know, take take on and sort of think about whether um, it can be achievable. And we obviously would want to support any ideas like this that you would bring forward. But I think, you know, we'd have to take it offline to work through the detail. And I believe you have met with our events person already. Is it Ian Tord off just to talk through? Yes. All the all the all the, all, all the stuff that isn't so exciting, like you yeah. know, the licensing and the health and safety and the risk assessments and so on. Uh, yeah. And we would also need to understand. I think a little bit about the, the ask of resource from highways and, and obviously police colleagues as well. Absolutely. And I think that's why, you know, that's what we have to get to, Karen. I think we're very mindful of that. And uh, I think that uh, yourself and Rose in particular, and we've already mentioned the the demands on your time. So let's be ambitious, but also let's be realistic. And we, we, we expect you to temper our enthusiasm. You're entitled to do so. <laughs> We like that. Thanks, Stephen. Uh, Rose, Thank can I bring you in there? Yeah, brilliant. I think Stephen, Stephen and Vanessa, fantastic. I think we need to set up a working group. I think I need to get some regular slots in so that we're keeping this going, that the momentum's there. There's some stuff, I, I won't go into the detail. Do you know what? There's a couple of really key themes that keep coming out for me of stuff I really want to do more of from an active travel perspective. Cargo bikes and freight, um, you know, and the kind of movement. I think there's quite a piece on that that we could add into the mix here. But what I'd love to be able to do is it's the attraction of people onto the bikes and where's their fear factor. And yeah, we know safety is a big one. But actually, I think having something to support this that shows where cycle parking is, where the cycle routes are, and having those lead rides of getting people from major urban centres into the places that we want where the activity is happening so if story house is a focal point what are we doing in Hull and Upton and Vickers Cross and Westminster Park and the Lake and Blaken to actually have led rides bringing people in because that's the fear factor isn't it sorry Stephen detail no, we can go no, on to sorry, it another no, time I, I, I'm sorry can I just really quickly pick that up I mean people may not have had this chance to read my word document but I talk very specifically about pull and push and what we talk about, we, we, whatever we have in the city centre is to pull people in. Mm -hmm. But there's an equally important role to, to push people in. And by push, yeah. I mean, it's only work if people like the Attract community, Clayton, like high school in Christensen, like Marks and Spencer, are so prepared to say, we're going to get a whole group of people. And half the fun is going to be going from Blaken, from Hall, from Christleton into the town that day. Yeah. And that push and pull model is really important to understand because we have to attract people by having events, but it's got to be community to say, let's cycle into Chester tomorrow. Let's be some 
and, and, and that's so the biggest barrier so, you know that that's what I really really struggle with in the job of getting this behavior change is it's actually it's the barriers and it's the perceived barriers and actually it absolutely. can be where do I park my bike how do I cycle along that corridor what's the absolutely. quickest route and so actually have facilitating that sort of pull to that magnet if we if we talked about it like that then I think that would be enormously beneficial for this yeah. whole you know for eight for at fest to really deliver that long lasting sustained sustained change that magnet that you are in the center but having really facilitated kind of either guided routes buddies all of exactly. that stuff going on as well yeah well i'm just to say look look at the word document because it does it's not My right apologies not, Steve. No, 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 no please there's no need for apology. it's just that i think it completely answers your point that we have to get the communities to say let's go in together and that's that that breaks down that barrier that the perceived barrier that you're referring to. I totally agree. Th thanks both. So we could take an action to set up a working group and um, we can in the meantime, I'll have a think about um, what people we would need to have around the table, because I know you've had those initial conversations, but there'll be I mean, I, I can think of Sarah, for example, in the high, in the um, safety team and she yep. does the cycling proficiency would be good. Um, and we can work through that detail and I'd, I'd like to be involved if it's possible um, at some, in some way. We'd love to, make... to be involved. <laughs> right. I'd love to be involved. OK, and, and I've just noted in the chat as well that um, Nicola Jane, said he's... Jane Meekin. Oh, Jane Meekin's the Chester yeah. Health is officer, That's, yeah. Yeah, good call, Nicola, good yeah. call. Um, yeah, so thanks for that, Nicola. Um, OK, have we got any other... any? we've got some hands up that have gone up now um steve and mike um are they all are they legacy hands or do you want to say something steve pemberton uh, no it's a legacy hand all oh, right okay um so um andy oh andy farrell yeah i mean i think this is great um <coughs> and the bid is really supportive as, as, as the nestor said <laughs> what i like about it particularly is the approach that's being taken is not about it's not the usual approach which says you know cars are bad it's all about saying active travel and cycling and walking is really cool and real fun and can transform uh the place in which we live and how we use it and it's a very subtle but different message actually uh and i think that's really really positive yeah i i, I would agree and rose always talks about saying to people leave your car at home if you can, because there'll be some people who might not be able to do that for all sorts of reasons. Yeah. And it's not, you know, you've got to move away from being divisive, really, I suppose, and having a sort of them and us thing, you know, you're either a motorist yeah. or you're not. Well, that that's how we how it can be achieved. Um, so so um, if we haven't got any other comments, um, we'll, we'll agree to set up a little, a little working group. Ro Rose, um, I know that... Um, well, we'll take it offline and discuss the details of it, but it'd be good to get it get it in the diaries fairly quickly, and I, and I'll have a chat. Reoccurring, with the yeah, because well. the time gets eaten up so quickly, and and so yeah, if we have this in the diaries as a reoccurring meeting, we know that we've got to do the actions for the next meeting, which is always a good prompt, isn't it? So no, leave that one with me, Stephen and Vanessa. If I could just ask you to nominate from your side who you want to be at there, uh, and we'll have a think, suggest some people to you, and then work out if we've got a, com a commensurate group. Yeah, right. And I've been looking at the um, the chat here and it's it's you're all absolutely spot on. So Sharon localities, absolutely Jane Meakin. And then Tamara, I was thinking all the way through it's students. It's September, isn't it? It's induction. Brilliant. Absolutely. You know, there's that angle to it. And then uh, Sharon, again, that care community will probably be launching or doing a bit more on the GP prescribing stuff. So there's that health angle. There's a lot of other GP units across Chester who are also doing social prescribing. They've actually employed social prescription nurses. And, you know, so there's a health angle there. So uh, we'll make sure we get all the comments from the chat to feed into what we do with the group. We try okay. to get as much of it packed in as possible. Oh, God, you did a brilliant thing for everybody, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, thank, thank you, and thanks both. And Steve, do you want to come back in, Steve Pemberton? Your hand's still up. That's a no. Okay. <laughs> Only because um, I didn't know how to lower it. I found out. Uh, oh, no problem. Okay. Um, so we were. Oh, I'm going to propose, Christian, if you, with your with everyone's permission, on the council updates. Um, would it be 
appropriate for you to send out just a brief written update um because i'm assuming you're working from a written update anyway rather than because uh, we're over time already really and i'm just conscious that we've run over um i hadn't written up because there was a few points that i just wanted to ask people on and to update people on oh, but okay. i can do no, no, no it's, it's fine it's i fine. can if do people are happy to stay and they're able to stay we it, can we can cover it now uh, well just it shouldn't be too long so okay. i'll and i Go quickly ahead, you know but um it was there's just a few things that i just think would be useful just to raise with the group and i think it's the part of it is possibly a presentation to tell you what we're doing but equally a little bit of is is sort of asking for maybe a little bit of help and support as well along the way sort of thing as well so i'm just gonna i won't i won't dwell on this too quick uh, too much but i'll try not to uh speak really fast as well but it was just to say on the active travel tranche 2 scheme that's that's going well this is the one in Hellsby near Hellsby high school we're putting in bus stop improvements um and we've put in a new toucan crossing um we're issued a notice on speed reduction um, from 50 mile an hour to 40 mile per hour um, there. And we are working with the high school to look at sort of transition from year six to year seven with the feeder schools. So potential for sort of more active travel modes and, and maybe lessons learned there as well, which I think would be useful for, for the group to maybe, you know, hear from if, if, not, if not contribute to at this point in time. But um, and just to say that it's slightly behind because we've had those three storms um, um, sequentially uh, Dudley and his friends um, but yeah that's that was just on that one but it was just a quick update in terms of some of the information that I know people um, were interested in um, from the group and this is about the active travel trench too um, and there was reference to active travel England as well so we consulted on these two schemes um, which is Weatherham and uh, Chesterway and Northwich and that was going back to January um, January, February last year. Um, they've sat with the DFT uh, for a while, um, but the Active Travel England group have, have come back and, and sort of given us some feedback on them. So I think it was quite important just to let people know what that feedback was really. Um, we've obviously had um, LTM 120 and gear change, and we've tried to be as compliant with those schemes as we possibly could. Um, but DFT came back to us and a number of other sort of local authorities to try and seek further design assurances, um, requesting more information from us um, to sub be submit back to them. Um, they um, they have awarded us funding this year, but subject to some changes, um, and they want us to do a more um, a more. So as Stephen Perry was saying about jigsaw puzzle pieces before, I think they want us to to um, do more incremental changes so that we'll have a, a sort of period of investment over over the next couple of years that we'll need to plug into. Um, so, for example. We, we did argue with, um, well, we had a words with DFT, I should say, they wanted to invest in inner in a, and central areas of towns and cities. Um, but we went back to them and said the schemes that we had put forward were part of our local cycling and walking and inf infrastructure plan. Um, and that we were, you know, keen to to um, invest in, in Northwich Town Centre as well as other areas. Um, and they they sort of took on board our advice and asked and said they would work with us. Um, but we have to revise our schemes quite significantly and work with Active Travel England on that. So it's really just to, to let you know that that piece of work is, is ongoing and we probably probably will need um, to ask for some help on that. But we will be sort of handheld through through that process with Active Travel England as well. So um, it was just to put that one out there. Um, E-scooter trial update, I can send this out. This was just to say that it's still really successful and, and the trial has been extended, but I won't dwell on that. I know people want to get um, back to their living rooms or wherever they are going. Um, we've also got a paper coming up tomorrow to enhance partnership for um, Cabinet. Um, and this is the plan and scheme to execute our ambitions for the bus service improvement plan. So all being well, that should um, should go through. Um, we've still not had our funding announcements. I won't dwell on all this, but we have done objection periods with the operators and had no real concerns. But we've also had some um, conversations with Trump Support Focus, Competition and Markets Authorities and, and other organisations, which will feed into some changes we want to make to the um, Enhanced Partnership Plan and Scheme. Um, I won't dwell on that too much if that's okay because I know people want to go but the other thing I wanted to cover was just quickly to say about the social prescribing because I think we've had a few conversations there around it um, we have been awarded £100,000 from DFT to work through some proposals um, that we put forward a while ago and um, we focused on the Ellesmere Port 
area because the criteria from DFT was about indices of multiple deprivation, health disadvantages, low car ownership, those kind of things. Um, and we were working with public health colleagues and some people around this virtual table as we speak. Um, we've got a number of ideas. We um, have also can build upon investment that we um, have made through local growth funds that we um, awarded through DFT, uh, through Local, through the LEP, apologies, uh, for cycling walking infrastructure, but we need to get uh, people to cycle more often for more journeys, for um, enhance people's lives in terms of access to education, further education, higher education, access to employment. Uh, and we've got a big monitoring and evaluation framework that we need to put forward for DFT as well on that. And we're looking for a number of partners um, to help us. Obviously, Ellesmere Port has about six GPs with social prescribers that we're all tapping into, um, housing associations on board. Um, but I suppose the, the question was, we, we we need to do cycle hire, we need to get um, accessible bikes and all the other sort of um, criteria. So it's, it's, it's training, it's making sure that people have a buddy system as well. So I know that there's, um, there's, there's, um, reference to that from Chester Cycle campaign so it's just whether you know potentially we could we could have a conversation on on those lines to to add to our bid really um so I'll leave it there and if it's okay if if it is okay to speak to the, the camp campaign about any of these sort of proposals then I'm happy to well I'll be more than happy actually <laughs> to to speak to you really so um apologies that was a bit of a blunder through but um I, I can I can provide a further update I know people want to to go Thanks so much, Christy. Um, that was really a whistle stop tour. Has anyone got any questions? Yes. Steve? I think uh, John, just, it's John. Just, oh, sorry. I think John. Oh, go, go on, John. No. Oh, John okay. and I know each um, other. It wasn't one of the points that Christy raised, uh, but it goes back a couple of meetings now to uh, something that Rose mentioned, uh, where she was going to talk to the FT at um, the. Uh, what, what the timetable is for the Mini Holland bid. And I think you're also going to talk some about the um, emergency active travel lanes. Um, oh. I mean, both of those overlap with each other, I know, but uh, I just wondered, what, have you heard anything or what, 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 how are things going? You heard the expression kicking us into the long grass, John. Um, okay. Every single oh. session we get kicked into the long grass and oh. every single tag we, we set up the same questions with them. They mm. have come, Sustrans, the DFT have come back with some Sustrans support to let us look at the uh, emergency active travel lanes to see what we can do with the LTM1 compliance element of it. Mini yeah. Holland, it's probably, well, who knows with a mini Holland? It's um, a long but shot, <laughs> it is. It and, and everything. It's always top of my agenda, top of my list mm. for the DFT. Unfortunately, but what Christie's just talked about there, this new scheme, they're actually put committing over eight hundred thousand pounds worth of funding into that one. But it's on the design element, yeah. which is why we are desperate for this group to really support us in in kind of you know they want us to be ambitious. They want they've given us ideas from Cable Street in London on the cycle superhighway about the types of engineering solutions that they want to see across it. So we think, John, that this is our mini Holland for now. Um but we will yeah. continue to keep asking that question. Well I think I think I agree. I think the Weaverham to Northwich uh, link is really important. Uh, yeah. you know, so I can see how it's I'm not saying it's easy to deliver, but it's, uh, you know, following the old, the, the space is there to put it and uh, we should be able to get to LTN 120 compliant. Not, I'm sure there's a few compromises along the way, but uh, overall it should, should be uh, achievable. Yeah. Cheers, okay, John. Thank you. Thanks, John. Steve? Uh, just very, very quickly for Christy, really. Um, you know, what we've, what, we collectively have achieved on the uh, Hellsby Active Travel Scheme is, is excellent. And I just wondered whether there was any plans to celebrate success with some public grand opening by the MP or someone that's appropriate to uh, just to raise the profile of what has been achieved. I think more thought needs to go into that, but absolutely, I think um, I think we we also need to work. I say with the school, um, we've got some plans for community involvement um, with the parish and town councils. Um, even if it's you know planting the daffodils in the grass verge and things like that, so there's a kind of program of events. So I think a, a, an opening would be um, a perfect start or culmination of that. So yes, leave it with uh, us. Okay, I'm glad we'll speak to you about it. Yeah, please do, because I'm glad you picked up on the daffodils, because I've taken some personal abuse about the uh, the daffodils being 
dear. Only from my friends in Rotary Club, but uh, that's an aside. <laughs> OK, thanks. Yeah, that will take that on board. Um, OK, do we have any other questions for Christy? I think we'll just come back to the group sort of offline with the, with the comments and the asks that we've got there. But this is the kind of the, the schemes to Stephen and, and Andy and, and all of the, you, you know, this is what you were talking about. This is the stuff where we start to make a real difference on the ground where we've got some opportunity to do so. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, OK. Um, right. I'm just looking at the time and thinking um, if, if we got any other business, I'm not not been notified of any other business. No, OK. Date of the next meeting, Christy. It's all gone in our diaries, hasn't it? Um, I haven't got it off the top of my head. I'm really sorry, but I will dig it out when I um, when I do the minutes. I'll make sure it's at the top of the um, top of the agenda. Apologies. Okay, sorry, no. just just on that point, Karen, I, I, I know that uh, there was a, an email about possible dates, but I don't think I've seen an email about confirmed dates for the rest of the year. So perhaps that could be followed up. Okay. I'll talk to Jess. I thought three went Jess, out. But Jess I'll sent follow. out the links, Stephen. Oh, well, Mike, in that case, I apologise. Sorry. Yeah, because it because um, yeah, I, I know what you mean. I, I understand why, though, because I think Jess did it and then um, Stephanie did it. And um, maybe that's caused some confusion. But yeah, we'll clarify that tomorrow if that's thank OK. You. Yeah. OK. All right, then. Well, thank you, everybody, for your time. Um, I look forward to seeing you next time. Um, and thank you to the officers for their commitment and drive and passion as well because I know it's uh, it's it's the graveyard shift working till eight o'clock when you've been on the computer since eight o'clock this morning so we do appreciate it okay yeah. thanks everyone thanks, thanks everybody take care thank you thank you everyone bye 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 thank you bye Hi, um, Tony and Alan, I'm just going to um, um, stop the meeting if that's OK. So that means I'll have to sort of remove you from the meeting so I can stop the recording. Apologies for that, um, but just to give you a bit of forewarning. All right. Thank you. Good night.